avid fisherman and um, uh, freshwater fishing and always bass, used, love it. always yeah there you go you know what I'm getting ready to say um, and I never used artificial bait always the night crawler yeah and when we would go down say for instance North Carolina we would buy our bait by the flat not the box but the flat and um, that was you know one of the most enjoyable times so do you have um, um, I guess orders for well I don't know whether what type of worms you you know you grow but uh, or harvest or whatever the appropriate term is but um, um, I just wanted to add that little tidbit in that there are other applications for the mighty worm well you're gonna you're gonna hear about the mighty worm here in a minute about where they come from and so forth but we don't sell our worms they're valuable employees i think we got workmen's comp and insurance and everything on <laughs> we, don't, we don't people ask us all the time about can i buy some worms and we go nope really so we Seems sell like that would be a, a another market uh, um, years ago, once again, when I, you know, after I got my house, I built a enclosure, you know, for worms and actually ordered, uh, you know, some online and, uh, I didn't do very well with them, but, um, so I guess I just kind of assumed that when you're talking about the ranch, just like a cattle ranch, sometimes they do sell cattle. Yeah. Uh, back in another life, I was a police officer in Indiana for 11, almost 12 years. Uh-oh, hold and up. Time out. Time out. Time out. I used out, to sell tickets. <laughs> I'm a retired deputy chief and homicide commander in Washington, D.C., so we can talk hey, the same language. Go ahead, I'll man. I'll tell you. Hey, there's another I tell you what things. Well, when I was a cop, and you well know this, Mr. Ritchie, we didn't make a whole lot of money back then. So I was thinking I need something to supplement my officer's pay. So I had a basement that I wasn't using. I said, you know what? A lot of people fish around here. I ought to look into, you know, raising some worms and then taking them to all the bait shops. So I got a little bit started in that, but it never came to fruition. So mm -hmm. now I live in Texas and I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to be retired. I need a hobby. I need to make some money along with my retirement. I remember a long time ago, I was thinking about doing some worms. Let me look into that. And I found out that what the worms make is more valuable than the worms. Took yep. me a long time to figure that one out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You'll hear about it here in just a second. Okay, I think Mr. Great. William is uh, pulling in the driveway right now. Sir William is. So he's the part of this presentation. He's actually going to give the presentation, Mr. William. Is. Marvelous. We have a Toastmaster that we'll be toasting later today. And it is our Honorable Glenn Martin. And he always is surprising us with magnificent toasts to you and Sir William. Okay, I'll look forward to that. Is yeah. that before or after? No pressure. <laughs> yeah. Glenn, are you going to do it prior to or after? After, after, so we can uh, toast with wine. Well, yes, after, after, wine. so we can, you know, because it always includes a, a thank you. So, am I am I supposed to have a glass of wine in here somewhere? Not until you're finished. Oh. <laughs> you, you mean they, uh -oh. didn't, they didn't tell you? Oh, man, I have not been informed of that oh. activity. This is a, we are a fun group. Done. I like it. Don. Don. Oh, Don. Don? Don is her husband. Don is her sweet husband that we all like. He is a darling. Because he, is he brings the wine. He certainly does. <laughs> the tea. <laughs> oh, yes. Iced tea. Uh huh. I'm drinking hot tea first. I don't know how this is Sir William's going to work because my picture is still up there, isn't it? Can y'all see me? No, we can see the yeah. little worm. Okay, good. So you can't see me, right? Well, we can see you in the. Yeah. Where we can see your face. Really? Gallery. Boy, I'm gonna put my glasses on again, I guess. I don't want you to see me. <laughs> <laughs> so grid, let's see. Show smaller. Hide thumbnail video. Can't see me now though, right? 
I can see you. I can see you. you. Well, that, that didn't work very good, did it? You can't hide from us. Dang. If, if you don't want us to see you, we could take our glasses off. <laughs> right. We wouldn't be able yep. to see anything. Yep. Oh, that was a good one. Oh, there we go. Well, see, I, I, I play the part of uh, Sir William, too, but you'll see me talking. See, that's not right. So, oh, what the heck is that? Well, we can just take you off. No, no, well, you don't have to do that. What happened to that? Oh, yes. yes. I have no idea. How the little red squigglies get all over there? Oh, I do that too once in a while. I do not know. <laughs> but it's okay. <laughs> yes. I thought those were the uh, night crawlers. Uh... <laughs> On yeah. the screen. No, they're a little bit bigger than that. <laughs> Do they ever crawl out? Oh, they try to all the time. I'll show you in just a minute. Well, it looks like they're only hitting South America, so we're safe. Oh, there it goes. Hey, the red left. I can take this off again. Would everyone please share with uh, Gary where you're from? And you can do it all like we've done it before. Texas, Florida, Nebraska, 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 North Kentucky, North Carolina, North Carolina Washington State, Michigan, Indiana, Maryland, Vermont, Maryland, Vermont, Colorado. Colorado. Southern Vermont. Wow. Maryland. I heard, in, I heard in Indiana out there. Is that right? Yes, sir. You did. That's what I thought. Whereabouts in Indiana? I live in Fishers, Indiana, just on the northeast side of Indianapolis. But she's a transplant from Kentucky. Yes, I'm a transplant I, from Louisville. In my police officer days, I was up in Portage, Indiana, Valparaiso ah, area near Gary. So that's I know right. where that is. I've driven through okay. it many a time. See me, let me. Donna, Portage said, is, Donna said North Carolina. Don't forget North Carolina. And this is Plymouth, Massachusetts. <gasps> Ooh, don't I'm see originally you. South Carolina. Oh, there we go. Here we go. Wow. Yeah. No, Hello. All, over. <laughs> all right. Before we start, let me take two minutes and introduce two special ladies to you. I'm Janice. Good morning. How are you? The two special ladies have started their own societies and they are president nationals. So I am going to call on uh, them to introduce themselves for just one minute. And it's Cynthia Bixby and Amanda Morris. And then please, if we have any other national officers with us today, would you please state your name and what organization you represent. So Cynthia, please. Hi, um, we started the Descendants of Early American, uh, Early American, uh, first for, <laughs> do I don't know, Early First Responders from 1776 through 1914, uh, firefighters, law enforcement, uh, medics, doctors, nurses, and the such. Um, and the money will go to uh, current first responders and their families that have uh, need some assistance. Thank you. Amanda, you're having a hard time signing on. Are you on now? All right, we will come back to her when she gets on. So it looks like right now it is two minutes until one. I am going to call. I have two people that cannot get in. So let's see what we can do. going on i don't know but i hear your birds i know we have beautiful birds let's see if i can get her on the phone i think they may be hearing my birds here in kentucky oh i bet so amanda are you able to sign on well, i've yeah, tried I'm to in. promote her a few times I'm in. I, it says I was promoted to panelist. Okay, that's good. Amanda, would you please um, state your name and about your 
a new society, please, so everybody can know? Oh, sure. Um, my name is Amanda Morris. I'm um, the Virginia ambassador for uh, Descendants of American Farmers. And I also recently, just a couple of months ago, um, started a new society called uh, National Descendants of American Railroad Workers. It's for um, people who had a railroad worker in their direct line, um, not collateral yet, kind of something that we're tossing around for the future. But for right now, it's just uh, lineal descent. And Virginia and, um, I got the <laughs> insignia yesterday. Oh, yeah. Great. Yes, Here's... I have. This is kind of hard to see because of the glare, but it's a insignia with a little train. And, Vir um, and Amanda, Virginia just showed mm -hmm. hers on Amanda. Virginia just showed hers on her ribbon. See? Oh, excellent. See? Oh. Gorgeous. Love it. <laughs> so if, um, if anyone wants information on those two societies, uh, I have the contact and we'll put those up or on chat or you all can put up your own on chat. Do we have yeah, any we'll other national officers with us today? I don't know. Any other uh, national officers with us? Yes, yes ma'am. Um, this is Joe Lee and I am the second vice president general of the National Huguenot Society. Oh, thank you, Joe Lee. Thank you so much. And let me say a shout out to High Virginia Rouse. And hi, Amanda, because I have three and they're in and you know that, so yay. <laughs> so. And uh, yeah. uh, Jo has been helping us immensely and I thank her so much for some of the suggestions she gives us. So I am national counselor in Postmasters, uh, Godiva, uh, just a whole bunch of them. And we appreciate you, Virginia. Thank you so much. Do we Thank have you. any other national officers with us that you'd like to say hello? Hi, this is Sue Mort. I'm a national vice president, Great Plains section, Daughters of the American Colonists. Thank you so much. Thank you. Sandy? Third vice president general, Colonial Dame, 17th century. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm a, a treasurer uh, general for First Families of Maine. Congratulations, Sandy. Helen? Yes, uh, Governor General, uh, Continental Society, Daughters of Indian War. I know we have a couple more of you. Hi. Yes. Yes. Linda Mizell, uh, Recording Secretary General for the Guild of Artisans and Tradesmen. Thank you. Sandy? Which National one? Just begin with any of them. National <laughs> Officer. She is a national officer for uh, CDXVIIC. Yeah, I'm third book. general and chaplain general for this wonderful organization. Thank you, thank you. So it's a few months, a few minutes after Sharon Allen is a past state president of 17th Century Dames, Texas. Have I missed anyone, please? If Ann so, Wagaman has her hand up. Ann, I apologize. Mm -hmm. Ann, please. I'm uh, Honorary Vice President General, uh, National Society of Colonial Dame, 17th Century. And Thanks. I am the corresponding Secretary General for uh, Continental Society Daughters of Indian Wars and a counselor in Colonial Daughters of the 17th Century. Marvelous. We have the best go-to people in. Now, have I missed anyone? Poor Jane. I did not see your hand up. Hello, OJ, our dear friend. Hey. How are you? I am the recording secretary general for the Daughters of the Republic of Texas and also the second vice president for the United States Daughters of 1812. And farmers. And corresponding secretary for farmers. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, one fast thing. Our national officers for NSDOAF. Please sound off real quick. Yes. Bev Sheely, Nebraska National Counselor. Okay. Cynthia Bixby, Kentucky Historian. Davina Lori. Lori Ferraccio Kenny. 
I am the Librarian National. Uh, Adam Boyce, uh, Second Vice President National. Davina. Janice Sue, Charlie has her hand up. Charlie, please. Oh, I'm sorry, y'all. I'm, I'm not an um, officer for farmers. I'm a genealogist general for First Families of Connecticut and um, Plymouth Hereditary Society and Registrar General for Descendants of Stephen F. Austin's Old 300 and a, parent, a trustee for Quakers now as of day before yesterday. As of a few hours ago? Yeah. <laughs> All right. I know I've missed Nancy Gilfillan. You are a director for us. Nancy Gilfillan, uh, NSDOAF uh, National Organizing Director. All right. Have I missed anyone, please? Pat Thibodeau is Pat, please. Yes, ma'am. Patricia Thibodeau, newsletter editor for Farmers. And I'm going to introduce a very special man of our society, uh, Frank Vargas. Frank Vargas is here, and he is the one who takes care of our computer. And we thank him for keeping us straight all the time. And you do can you rent him out. I'm sorry. Do I do you rent, rent him. him. I certainly do rent him out. In fact, he helps a lot of our of our uh, friends remotely. Thank you, Frank. Yes, thank you, Frank. Without you, I would be moving. I would be, Davina and I have said, if Frank moves, we're going to move. <laughs> and uh, a special lady, Kay Cruz, uh, is with us and she's a member of us. So Kay, do you wanna say something? Well, hello there, aren't you kind? <laughs> I, I am nothing for nobody right now and kind of liking it that way. <laughs> but I'm awfully happy to be here and looking forward to learning about worms. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> with with that, I'm going to start. I'd like to welcome Gary Green. He is with the Magic Worm Ranch, and Davina and I drove to his Magic Worm Ranch, and were so fascinating that we asked him to please do this presentation for us. So, Gary, it is all yours, sir. Well, thank you, ma'am, and I hope everybody's okay for the next two hours, and then we'll uh, away. <laughs> Oh, no, I, I had it booked until six o'clock tonight. Oh, oh well, I, I can, yeah, I'm, I don't talk very much, so yeah, <laughs> right. Man, I didn't know there's going to be this many dignitaries. I'm Sir William's going to be thinking, wow, he hope he's not too nervous. So you got a couple things on your screen right there. Support global worming, and you got to be careful how you say that. One of our other slogans at the Magic Worm Ranch here in Plantersville, Texas, is we believe every day is Earth Day. Not just Earth Day, but yep. every day is Earth Day. We support climate control, and you'll see a lot of that here in, ju in just a minute. Veteran-owned, family-operated. There are six of us that run the operation. The real star of the show, however, is Sir William. Now, Sir William, notice it's not Willie. It's Sir William the Worm, not Willie the Worm. Sir William was in a cultured for two years, imported African night crawlers. Took us two years to get the right dirt, to get the right food, to get the right moisture, the right water, the right temperature that they live in. Many worms paid the ultimate sacrifice as we were learning how to do this. Well, the worms, I tell you, Absolutely amazing creatures. You know, they, they survived the two extinctions, including the one that killed the dinosaur. So Sir William always says, ha, ah, T-Rex ain't got nothing on me. Uh, they're blind. They're deaf. They have no spine. But they are very, very smart. And I'll show you how I know that here in just a minute. Darwin spent the last years of his life researching and called these worms called earthworms, the most incredible, impactful creature on the planet. On the planet, it was amazing what he came up with. Now, when you think of a worm ranch or a ranch, you usually think lassos and saddles and things like that. Trust me, we do not ride our worms. If you've seen the heft of some of the people that work there, well, there's no way you can ride a worm. But the worms live in the... Uh, condominiums, high-rise, 
there are 250 worms in each one of those black buckets that you see right there. They are raised and, and live in the best black Texas compost that we can find. It's even got 30% recycled tea bags in it because they do like their tea and coffee grounds. High nitrogen content. We also feed our worms special organic diet consisting of 31 different grains that we have really finely ground up. It's almost like powder. That's what gives them their calories and, and gets them to move around a lot physically. We also have a secret booster, but I don't think it's very much of a secret anymore because I tell everybody what it is. It's calf replacement milk powder. It smells like vanilla. They get a big cup of that also in there. It's, it's very sweet smelling and tasting. The worms absolutely love it. They go crazy for it. It's like chocolate cake to them. Makes them very active and they really appreciate the extra protein and the extra energy that it gives them. Now our worms, every, all these buckets with 250 in there, they actually eat the furniture. In 14 days, it takes them to go through that entire bucket of the organic compost, the 31 grains and the booster. It takes 14 days. At the end of 14 days, they're getting a little hungry. Do you know a worm has five hearts? Everybody knew that? Probably not. So what they do, they climb to the top of their bucket looking for love because they got five hearts. They find a mate. They do the thing. They make cocoons. Then they dive back down into the dirt ready to try to find some more food in there. So at the end of the 14, on the 14th day, they get to go on the Six Flags of America ride. Folks, that blue critter that you see right there, it is a commercial worm harvesting machine. It rocks gently back and forth. We call it the Six Flags of America ride for worms. So one bucket at a time, these worms are dumped on top of this machine and it gently rocks. Sir William and all of his friends, they drop down into this bucket right here because they're too fat to go through the screen. And we have multiple screens on here. So there's some debris and cocoons that go down into the debris bucket here, but the real magic are the castings that go into these buckets underneath the harvester. That's where the castings go. Now, Sir William wanted me to let you know that he is kind of smart. Over here, you'll see these buckets on the bottom. There's our tower of worm buckets. By the time we get down here to the third or the fourth layer, down all the way to the floor, those worms have heard the lunch bell, the dinner bell has rang, and they crawl up to the top of the bucket looking for food. They know, and they're smart, they know they're about to get a brand new condo full of really good food for them. So they're very smart. They feel the vibration in the floor. They don't hear it, they don't see it, they, but they feel it. So they go through the Six Flags of America, they get put into a brand new bucket, and the entire 14-day cycle starts again. This is what our worms look like. William and his friends, notice how they're kind of purplish and blue, iridescent, actually. It's at, they're absolutely amazing. This is what signifies them as African nightcrawlers. But now that they're in Texas dirt, they like to be called Texican nightcrawlers. So what they do, all the organic material in that bucket, they actually eat everything in the bucket. I think if there was a battery in there, they would try and eat it. They are voracious eaters, Africans are. They're not red wigglers eating kitchen scrap. They're eating organic material and they go through it very, very quickly. Everything that they eat passes through the digestive system. The worm actually homogenizes it. Not like milk, but they make everything very similar in size. If you had a magnifying glass or a microscope, you'll see this, this pile of worm castings here on the right would have little footballs. That's because the worms coat it with polysaccharides. They make little footballs. And what goes in the front of the worm? Can somebody help me out? Comes out the where? The back of the worm. The back of the worm, <laughs> right. So what goes in the front of the bag? Maybe, may, have you purchased this in the past? If it did not look like what's on your screen right here, guys, really very, very dark brown, almost black, you didn't get very good worm castings. And how do I know that? We send our worm castings in to Earth Fork. It's the national recognized place that tests these kind of things. They're in Corvallis, Oregon. And we have been told we have the best worm castings of anything they've ever tested in the nation. 
We actually started out at 93%. And Chandra from Earthwork called me and said, man, your castings are really, really rich. World-class castings are 85%. You're at 93. You might want to add a little more dirt, a little more humus, a little more organic material there, because this is incredible. So they did a plant-available nutrients analysis and also the compost detail of what we, our worms, Sir William and his friends, produce. So you can kind of see here now we're at 87% castings. No one can be 100%. If anybody tells you, hey, our worm castings are 100% worm castings, that's a fib. It cannot be done. All of the key nutrients that a plant needs for spectacular growth are in the worm castings. It's worm poop, folks. And that's what it's really rich, all right? So you, plants need calcium. They need nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium manganese, chlorides, among a, a lot of other things. And if you look at this report, you can see that our castings are chock full of this in very, very high numbers. On the right-hand side, on the compost detail, a huge amount of bacteria and active microbes. That is a key for plant growth. You'll also see protozoa. And the amoeba protozoa is the most important for us here in Texas because we have really humid weather and it gets hot. So our plants and vegetable plants, flowers, everything is really subject to what's called root rot. It's terrible. It kills the plant. Well, the amoeba protozoa, and we engineered it like this, is what eats the root rot, keeps the plant healthy. It takes all the root rot away. So ours has 2.5 million amoebas in every gram. You're looking for anything over 100,000. Ours is 2.5 million. We also have uh, and the nitrogen cycling potential is incredible. The machine of the earth for goes up to 300. That's as high as it goes. They can't test anything that's better than that. They list ours at 300 plus. How, why is that important? Well, a farmer who has one acre would love to get 200 bushels of corn off of that acre. To do that, those plants have to cycle, have the ability to cycle through 275 pounds of nitrogen. We're 300 plus. We don't know how high it is, but it's, it's quite a bit. So we're very proud of this analysis. We take special care. Everything we measure here that we buy at the big box store, no one has gotten over 41% castings they have nowhere near the nutrients that we have right here. So we're kind of proud of that and we're gonna maintain it. We've also engineered our castings to have two plant hormones are called, yeah, it's, it's cytokinins and oxygen. It's like estrogen and testosterone for plants. The cytokinin hormones for plant encourage the shoot buds to split into two pieces, two shoots coming out, not just one plant, now it becomes two. And folks, sometimes it's three. It's absolutely amazing. So if you've got one plant, that guy said it become two, you're increasing your, your quality, your quantity, your yield goes up. So that's what the cytokinins do, encourage the shooting, the buds to split. And then the oxen hormone, it's about the roots because they're looking up going or feeling up, man, it's getting really top heavy up there. We better make a really solid root structure, build the roots even bigger than normal. It's man, they're growing a lot upstairs up there. So cytokines and oxids are really great for plants. This was interesting, and I just pulled this up. Uh, the Austin, University of Austin, their chemistry and biochemistry department did this analysis. Here's this orange, 1980. That orange is full of calcium, iron, vitamin A, vitamin C, all the great things that your body needs. You would have to eat in today's day and age eight oranges, eight, count them. Anybody wanna eat eight oranges? Eight oranges to get the same nutrients, the same vitamins, the same minerals as one orange from 1980. Folks, our dirt has become poor. We have depleted our soil. And any good gardener will tell you, if you want a great garden, you must start with great soil, period, end of statement. So our castings are all about building strong soil. We don't feed the plants. 
Our castings feed the soil, make the soil strong. That's where the plants get their nutrients. They take it up through the roots in the soil. So what has caused all this soil depletion? What, what is going on here? How come we got so bad? Here's why, folks. And I'm sure you've seen these planes, crop dusters out there dusting their fields with chemicals. You've seen the farmers out there and their tractors towing the big tank in the back, spraying. I pulled this guy up online the other day. He's got a hazmat suit on, a respirator, rubber gloves to spray his tomatoes. That's, that's absurd. That's absurd. I'm not even going to eat those tomatoes. Here we got a farmer pouring a commonly used farming product that's called lasso, and it's corrosive and carms your eyes and everything. That's why they got to wear gas masks and stuff to put it in there. This is what we do in today's day and age, and this is what's depleting the soil. All the sides, all the synthetic fertilizers, and all the, the stuff that ends in the word side. Side is a Latin word, and it means death something's going to die, we're going to kill something. Herbicide, pesticide, insecticide, suicide, homicide, all the sides are bad. In fact, they're getting so bad in the United States. Here's a lady just took the temperature of her little son. She got somebody on the phone. What do you think she's saying? She's saying, Billy won't be in school today. He ate all his vegetables. <laughs> craziness but we're using all this stuff and and it's just getting crazy i took this picture to walmart not not long ago aisle two at walmart is called the isle of death pest control weed killer bug killer all the stuff that kills in the midwest right along the mississippi river there's a bunch of agricultural companies that grow food you can see in this upper right-hand picture, here's all the migrant workers. They're wearing the hazmat suits and the mask and they're spraying the fields. Well, folks, guess what happens with that spray? The runoff goes into a river, runs north, south, river. Anybody know what it is? You must have muted everybody. <laughs> I did. Ah, yeah. That's what I thought. So it, it's actually the Mississippi River. And the Mississippi runs all the way down to the Gulf. On this picture on the right lower side, that red area that you see in that picture is 9,000 square miles of death. 9,000 square miles of dead zone. Nothing can live in there. Everything is dead. And it's because all of the runoff coming down the Mississippi River flows right there to the Gulf. The, the shrimp boat people in Louisiana have to go out nearly 200 miles now to get a catch of shrimp. It's crazy. We are doing it to ourselves. We got to do something other than put synthetic fertilizers and all these sides, all these pesticides and herbicides and insecticides and all that stuff on our on our screwing up our water sources and things, right? Any one of these furry friends at home? I got a couple of them, right? They're rescue dogs from the shelter. You got a furry friend, you got a front yard. Do you treat your front yard with stuff like Roundup that's got a lot of the phosphates in it? Any of the sides to kill the bugs, to kill the weeds, that kind of stuff, right? Your furry friend who goes out and plays in that front yard has a 70% increase in chance of getting cancerous lymphomas and dying. That just from that, I can imagine done without all the sides. Can you grow things? Of course you can. The picture that you see right here is a place in LA. It's right along the freeway. I used to live out there. They have a total of one tenth of their property is devoted to organic food production. They produce seven thousand pounds of organic food per year on that tenth of an acre. Supplies their, all their diet. And they make $20,000 a year just selling the extra produce because they cannot possibly eat it that much. And they do all of this, folks, with no synthetic fertilizers, no herbicides, none of that. It's all with earthworm casting. Now, at our Magic Worm Ranch, we have something that we've got. Ours is a twelfth of an acre. It's called the Magic Garden Return to Eden. 
because that's what we're doing. We're going back all the way to Eden. Does it work real life? I'd like to show you a picture here, just one picture of our garden. On the left-hand side, you can see all the onions that we got in. They were on the shelf, ready to go. Then we put them in the ground right here, back into the ground, we planted them. And here's that same row 30 days later. And now they're even bigger than this. This is a couple weeks old. So they're even bigger than this. Folks, there is no pesticides, no fertilizer, nothing. This is all worm castings, organic, completely found in nature. We're just making more of it is all we're doing. It can be done. It's called regenerative or regenerative organic certified gardening. Gardening. All these rows that we have in our garden will never be tilled. We'll cultivate them a little bit with a, what's called a broad fork, loosen the ground up or everything, put some more compost on there. They will never be tilled because we want the carbon that came out of the atmosphere sequestered into the dirt. We want that to stay there. What a great climate control thing. Carbon sequestering. That's what that's all about. That's basically what we do here at the Worm Ranch and our employees, like I was telling Bill, it's, it's, they are valuable employees. We don't sell our worms. We only sell what they produce, worm castings. On the screen right here, here's the Worm Ranch. It's alive, we call it. It's alive with powerful microbes, bacteria, and nutrients. There's our website. When you get a chance, please go on there, magicwormranch.com. Look around the website. You'll find a lot of answers to any questions you might have and really learn a whole lot more than what we do. My personal phone number is on here. This is my mobile number. If you've got a question anytime, just give me a call. There's what our bags look like. And when you call, if you call, do not ask for Sir William. He won't be able to come to the phone because Sir William's going to be very hard at work. So you wanted me to keep it. You wanted me to keep it short and sweet, Genesis. So I kept it short and sweet. Should I stop the share now and give it back to you? Yes, please, sir. May I call for everyone to unmute themselves? And we're going to take questions for uh, Sir William and Gary. Do we have any questions? Yes. Um, this is Trish in, uh, in Kentucky. Uh, Trish. Is, are the castings basically just top dressed, or do you actually work it into the soil? Boy, it all depends on what you've got planted already and what you're anticipating planting. If you're building like an 8 by 12 uh, raised bed and you're just starting to put some nice dirt and compost in there, you want to mix the castings in there at about a 30% ratio. Prepare the bed with the castings. It'll make it very fertile. If you've already got plants, you've already planted, you can take a handful or a solo cup and you sprinkle it all around the plant, dig it in with your fingers, water it in. There's all different kinds of applications you can use. You can even make worm castings tea out of the worm castings to spray it. It's like watering your plants with the tea. In fact, we're gonna have some here a little later, I guess. Oh no, that yes. was wine. That was I've, wine. I've, heard, I've heard about that. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, we've, we've, we're building a house on uh, right at five acres and um, we've got, it's secondhand growth hardwood um we have a lot of dogwoods and red buds and i'd like to try and where we've thinned some of the trees out i'd like to try and boost the uh ornamental uh natural you know the red buds in the dogwoods and then i'll be oh. planting hostas and fighting with deer for supremacy um <laughs> so, Here, so a couple uh, couple things on that make keep keep all the red buds you can they love earthworm castings i bought my wife patty and uh I don't know, it was about four feet tall redbud tree a couple of uh, three years, four years ago, I can't remember. And now it's about 30 feet tall. There are a lot of plants that respond absolutely incredibly to worm castings. And that's one of them. On your deer, because you got to fight the deer if you're building gardens and stuff. What I want you to do is go to the grocery store or the Walmart, Kmart, or whatever you got around, buy six bars or as many as you need, six bars of Irish spring so I already do that. I, I already do that. Well, Gary, go ahead. <laughs> wow. do you do? Boy, you, you're probably ahead of me then. Well, <laughs> do you prefer yes. the Irish spring? Do you do you prefer to hang the bars in netting or do you like to shave it and sprinkle it around? 
both. You don't hang the bar. You shave the bar, put that in the netting to give more surface area so it spreads the aroma farther. And then throw, okay. the, throw a lot of the shavings around also. All mammals hate that, including deer. They yeah, hate my, husband, ugly. my husband hates it too. <laughs> I hate it when that happens. You should buy us some dial then. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. I really or, or enjoyed better it. or more than that. Maybe you should help him when he's in this. <laughs> this is a family show. Okay. <laughs> Gary, uh, we've got some hands up. We've got uh, Bill Ritchie's hands up. We've got Amanda Morris, Glenn Martin, and Virginia's. So go I'll for it. Question What is the lifespan of your of the average uh, night crawler? Our worms live four to five years. They're indoors. 70 degrees year round, 24 7, 365, 70 degrees, even in the winter. So they make it four to five years. A worm and out in the wild will make it maybe a year, a year and a half. The climate, uh, predators get them, and so on and so forth. So our worms last three to four times longer. And his worms have their own generac generator. Yes, they do. <laughs> Amanda, you had your hand up next for Gary. Um, this is sort of a big picture question, but those images of the, you know, the spray, the pesticides going on the foods with people in hazmat suits. I mean, that's, it's pretty horrifying, but um, is there any, do you have any sort of general ideas about how organic um, food production can just be more practical on a large scale? I mean, right now, I buy organic produce, but you know, not everybody can afford to buy organic produce. That's why we have, you know, such cheap produce because we have these toxic pesticides that can be mass, you know, implemented. But um, it, can you, I mean, I know this isn't exactly, you know, it's, it's kind of a broad big picture policy question, but how can we make it so there isn't this incentive to use these toxic measures. We have to spread the word. Bill Gates, who yeah. I've been in touch with now, he owns a lot of that agricultural property along the Mississippi River. He owns more agricultural prob property in the United States than anybody else. If I could just get him and his staff and show them what worm castings tea would do, compare, see worm castings also has a built-in pesticide. I don't want to call it a pesticide, but some kind of a deterrent for pests. They hate the taste of it and they'll move on to the next field or wherever they're, wherever they're going. It keeps the bugs out. It works. Magic worm castings and the tea, they won't solve all of the problems that us gardeners face out in the world, including the runoff and all that, but it's something that's gotta be considered. If I could get them to consider it and give them an exhibition, here's how you can do this without harming the environment, without harming our water. I think we would all be in a better place. And when you did that, the cost of all that produce would go down at the grocery store. I don't, we don't buy produce at our grocery store anymore. We, we grow our own, period. That's, and that's one of the reasons why. But I, that's a pretty big picture. And one other further thing, we've also been in touch with NASA. NASA just went, a few weeks ago, went back to what they call their worm logo. It looks like a worm, N-A-S-A, -A. looks like a worm. They call it their worm logo. We've been in touch with them. And Sir William might need a space suit pretty soon. They have a new machine on the International Space Station called a lily pond growth changer, cha growth chamber, lily pond growth chamber. What they're trying to do is figure out a very easy and very fast, quick way to grow microgreens, lettuce, and things that the astronauts can eat up in space while they're on their adventures. So, gee, I don't know if Sir William can involve, can, uh, can make it in, in zero gravity or whether microbes or bacteria, but guess what? As they say in Texas, we're fixing to find out. So there's a lot of things on a global scale that are gonna happen. You're gonna see it with worm castings and the tea and stuff in the very, very near future. Just gotta get Thank the you. word out. Thank you, Gary. We have four more that we have questions. Glenn Martin, Virginia, Alinda White, and Debbie Hansen. So Glenn, please. Yes, uh, you've obviously been in contact with government agencies and uh, not only do worms contribute a lot to the soil, but I understand they, they are also able to remove heavy metals like lead and zinc and cadmium. And I'm wondering if you've been contacted or had any discussions with the EPA about uh, Superfund sites and using 
organic methods like worms to remove a lot of the heavy metals that are found in a lot of those Superfund sites. Okay, what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to get out of my slideshow. Am I still on there? Uh, no, sir. All right, so the slideshow went away, but I'm still here, right? Correct. You are. All right, so what I'm trying to get to is get to my files, because that was an absolute stellar question. Um, and I'm not going to be able to get to it very quick, but I'm going to try here. Hold on, just if you just give me just a second here. Uh, there it is. I'm not going to be able to find it. I'm not going to be able to find it rapidly, but arsenic, cadmium, lead, all of that, what we've discovered, and I've had mine tested, our castings were tested. Our worms lower the arsenic level down to almost nothing in the soil. The cadmium, think smoking cigarettes, right? Almost next to nothing. They also check for salmonella and E. coli. What can the worm do to that? It's down to zero. Also <laughs> lead. It's, it's amazing how worms can actually clean the soil. They're now have got some testing going on where worms are in landfills, cleaning all that up. The worms are just magnificent creatures, especially when it comes to the heavy metal stuff. I was hoping to have my report up here because I got the heavy metals report and what our worms did. It's astonishing. Good question. Thanks, Virginia. You have your hand up. Yes. I have a lot of worms in my garden and I'm a tea drinker. Should I put all the tea grounds in there to help them? Sure, absolutely. Save them up, put them in a jar or whatever, and you get enough, go spread them all through the garden. Worms love tea grounds and coffee grounds. Plus, those grounds have a high content of nitrogen, and that's good. But I want you to be careful with using too much nitrogen. Plants over time have developed a sense where if there's an overabundance of nitrogen in the soil, that's the first thing they go after. The first thing that they eat, it's their chocolate cake. And sometimes if there's too much, they forget to eat the potassium, the phosphorus, the, the manganese, the chlorides, because all they want is the nitrogen, it's chocolate cake. We've had people use crazy nitrogen content fertilizer and they've come to us and said, man, my plants grew really well, but I didn't get any flowers, I didn't get any tomatoes, I didn't get any peppers, why? Your nitrogen was too high, that's all the plant was taking in, no phosphorus, no potassium, none of the stuff that makes the fruit. So. Don't put a lot, but you can put all yours in there easily. Thank you. Thanks, Virginia. Linda White. Uh, yes, Gary. Uh, what is the price of your smallest container and how much is that covered? It all depends on what application you're using. Are you putting it in your garden before you plant? Well, which you'll need more, you need to mix it in there. And uh -huh. the application is a handful. So my goodness, there's probably one, two, 12 handfuls in the, in a eight pound bag, probably, or at least 10 handfuls. Um, I, I need to send you all a, we have a trifold flyer that explains all the directions and how to use it and so forth. Our mm -hmm. small, we have three different sizes, actually four. We have small, medium, large. They're eight pound, 16 pound, 24 pound, and we also have one more. It's a 1,000 pound super sack. A lot of the landscapers come to us and buy the super sacks from us. The eight pounds, I, we've got it on sale. If you come out to the, our, our farm right now, uh, it's $10, $15, and $20. So we, we reward you for buying more in quantity. And we've tried to ship this before, and I know that's the next question. I'd love to send all of you folks one bag you know, but it costs more to ship that small eight pound bag than the bag costs. It, it's crazy, it costs $25 to ship it in the United States. The bag's only $10. Do you ship in the United States if people choose to pay that? Yes. Okay. We can. Thank you. I Thank just, it just rose me the wrong way how much money they make on the shipping. I just, why don't you drive here to Plantersville, Texas? You're not that far, right? She's in Arkansas. So right across the border, kind of, sort of. <laughs> I'm kidding. 
We'll meet you halfway, Linda. Uh, Debbie Hansen. And Debbie uh, just posted for all of you the website. It, that wasn't me. <laughs> I apologize. Somebody did. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Anyway, my question is back to the deer deterrent. We have a terrible problem with deer in New Jersey. So tell me the specifics of what to do with the soap. On the bar of soap, you're going to take a knife or a cheese grater or whatever, and you're going to shave shavings off of the soap. So now you got a big old handful of all these little shavings. Put them in a, I don't know, pantyhose or mesh bag of some sort, somewhere that allows the scent to go out. And you hang a bunch of those from your trees, plus sprinkle the shavings all over the ground. I actually have a dog, so we're okay. Yeah, my dog doesn't do anything for that. But <laughs> Thank you. Donna Cohen. We uh, were, our home was built in a former swamp. <laughs> they, cleared okay. the, they cleared the land, but we get terrible root rot in our plants. And uh, we're going on our third landscaping venture in two years. What? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> you, you have to get some castings in there. The protozoa and worm castings eat the root rot, eat the disease, everything. It clears the soil. It, just like it clears the, the metal out and everything, it clears out all diseases for not all, but a lot of it. Now, with trees that are already established, because we bought some big trees, um, would how would we apply that around the trees? Well, you're going to use a broadcast method. However, however big your blooming tree is from side to side, whatever that diameter. So maybe it's 20 feet tall, but maybe it's 20 feet wide also. Those roots go all the way out to the edge of those leaves right. or limbs that you have. So you would broadcast, you'd take a bag and just broadcast it all over that 20 foot diameter circle, water it in. It will get the roots. I oh, use okay. it on uh, peach trees peach trees, plum trees, orange trees, all citrus love casting. So do all trees, shrubs also. I know when I was in California, there were, there was a, a earthworms uh, and it didn't, I, it's probably gone by now, but gone on by now, but people were very slow to, to get into the organic part of things, but it, it's kind of making a comeback now. I mean, organic uh, COVID and the pandemic really shook people up a lot because they'd go to the grocery store and the shelves were bare. So the victory garden psychology got back in place. You know, I need to grow food for my family. We've got people coming out to the worm ranch right now. And they've read a lot, uh, some on castings and they know it's good. They don't even how, know how to plant a tomato plant or a cucumber plant or any other kind of plant. And that's why we started our garden clinics, you know, to educate people. Here's how you do this. Here's how you plant. You got to grow food for your family. Yeah. Agreed. Thank you, Gary. Thank I, you. Know, I know that some of there are other uh, worm farms for castings in the United States. Are there any that you know of that you would recommend for people that are in, uh, for instance, Arkansas or Washington State or other or do you network with you know, those people? We, we are OMRI certified, our castings are. The Organic Materials Review Institute. It costs a lot of money to get the certificate. It, you, it's a time consuming process. They do so many inspections. It's absolutely crazy, but we thought it was valuable to do that. I can go on the OMRI website and find other worm casting places in the United States who did earn a certificate. I don't know if there's any in Arkansas or you know Wyoming or whatever, but I could try to find something. But you, even though they got a certificate, you got to be careful because Omri lists gives certificates even though the arsenic levels are too high, so they have restrictions on their <coughs> casting. Must not be used for gardening of vegetables for consumption and stuff like that. It it gets a little wacky. We are no restriction. Omri. There's not many companies out there. You'll find a lot of certificates. Last I checked was 54 companies, uh, but I think half of them didn't make it through the 
pandemic and a lot of businesses went went south, went bankrupt and went under. Thank you. Gary, um, they are asking, are your garden clinics online? And if they are not, would you please do the next one and take your camera out and record it? And if you cannot, then could Davina and I come out and record it on our iPad for our you, you are reading my mind. Our next garden clinic in May is going to be recorded. As a matter of fact, I like your idea better though. I like for you and Davina to come out and do it. All right. That'd be great. That'd be swell. Hey. We'll get it online, but we wanted it, we wanted it to go online. So we'll have two people doing a video. I'd just like to see you. Good. So would I. We can if you don't mind, we will post it on our farmers website. Sure. It's the third Saturday in May. I don't have the date in front of me, but it's the third Saturday in May at 11 a.m. We'll be I'll, uh, I'll get to the perfect Where's my uh, calendar. Trish, do you have do you have your hand up or are you just apparently not? I think that was an accident. That's fine. That's fine. Well, Gary, this has been phenomenal. Does anyone else have any comments or questions? I have two things. I very don't... exciting pre presentation. It was yes. very helpful. Yes. Well, thank yeah. you. Kind Give of a me. short time. This is a this is actually an hour long presentation, and then we get into good bugs, bad bugs. How do you do companion gardening? I mean, there's so much stuff, so much information it's hard to get it out in a short period of time. Yes, um, before everyone goes, we have a couple of things to, uh, to take care of. Gary, I want to present you with one of our farm recognition certificates. <laughs> and Davina and I will bring it out. This is a, a certificate that our members can request uh, to present to farmers. And ours says to the Magic Worm Ranch and Sir William, it is our pleasure to honor you for your dedication uh, to our environment. Gary Green, the American farmer, 1776 to 1914, has been a huge part of the success of America. We honor you and your ancestors for unlimited contributions in making our country the breadbasket of the world. Janice Regal and Davina Littman. Wow, thank you so much. I'm, I'm anxious to post that on the wall. We, we will bring that out to you. And, so well-deserved. Uh, yes, well-deserved. Davina, we need our numbers. We can't leave nope. without our numbers. 1,163 wonderful, wonderful members. Wow. And we have 47 youth. And on our supplements, honoring all of our extra ancestor farmers, 1,102. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Believe that. And remember, all of the proceeds from the all of the, the $50 for the supplements goes directly to scholarships in agriculture and farming. And Nancy has her hand up before we go to uh, the benediction. And then before we go to uh, our toast, we can never go without our toast. Nancy. That's an accident, although I enjoyed it thoroughly. I don't know how that came up. Sorry. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> Thank you. So why don't we do uh, the toast and then Sandy, after that, please, a short benediction. Thank you. Oh, everybody, you have your wine, your tea, your coffee, your water, because we always do this, remember. Notice how big my glass is. Yes. Oh, it looks like a worm. <laughs> Are we ready, Madam President National? We are, sir. Okay. Once again, thanks to our society leadership, we have been treated to an educational and enlightening presentation. We don't often give earthworms a second thought, You've but they have been recognized as a vital facet of our ecosystem for a long time. As Gary mentioned, the inestimable Charles Darwin published his final book, The Formation of Vegetable Mold to the Actions of Worms, in 1881, only a year before his death. In it, he wrote, it may be doubted whether there are many other animals which have played so important a part in the history of the world as have these lowly organized creatures. Today we've seen how the invaluable biological processes of earthworms can be harnessed and directed to provide an even greater contribution to agriculture. And so, on behalf of the officers and members of the National Society Descendants of American Farmers, I extend our gratitude to Mr. Green for sharing with us his time and energy today 
in order to bring us another fascinating view into a less frequently considered aspect of farming. We send our heartfelt wishes to Gary Green, his family, and all of the employees of Magic Worm Ranch, including Sir William and the rest of the worms, for their continued health and prosperity, and may the Magic Worm Ranch have many more years of successful and environmentally beneficial accomplishments. Cheers. Cheers. Wow, Cheers. nice. Cheers. Very nice. One of the highlights of the day. Sandy, would you please give us a benediction and then everybody can stay on if you want after it's over. Let us pray. Almighty God, we are so thankful for this time that we have had to come together. May we be diligent in our efforts to advance this society. May we be ever devoted to you, to our families, and to our beautiful world. These blessings we ask in your most holy name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sandy. So our Zoom is over. However, those of you who want to stay and visit, or Gary, if you can stay a few minutes, uh, everybody can talk, or we can leave. So what? I gotta go weed the garden. <laughs> Enjoy. That's it. my Enjoy. That's my afternoon activity is meet the staff over at the Magic Garden, the Return to Eden Garden. We're gonna weed all the aisles today. So pretty big job. Any old available?